it was called the Gettysburg of the West. It was the biggest uh, uh, overall battle in the Western theater with regards to, uh, not with numbers, but with regards to the outcome. It pretty much sealed the fate of the Confederacy in the West. Sad. I mean, it was pretty much Hood was out of options, and Thomas was up in Nashville with a lot more troops, and he had Chofield in front of him with about 20,000 outnumbered to two, and he almost caught him at Columbia, and let him slip by, and it was it was an absolutely foolish battle. The Union troops didn't think they'd get attacked at, at all. They just they just they dug their breastworks. They had cannons in back them, cannons in Fort Granger overlooking the battlefield, and the battlefield converged on this tight spot. It was a suicide. It was pointless. But and the Rebs knew it. They were putting their um, names and sign them into their tunics and stuff, so people know could identify them once they got hit and stuff. And they, to their credit, they went ahead and did it. It was a poor decision to attack massive earthworks. Forrest wanted to go and hit them on the flanks. That would have been a much better plan. Uh, got a lot of people killed, wounded, and. Uh, so it was the beginning of the end. This time, the army pretty much, clothing-wise, didn't have a whole lot. Majority of them didn't have shoes, socks. Uh, the pants that they had were just basically rotten and falling off because they weren't being able to be resupplied. And even those that uh, were captured, there's recounts from federal soldiers saying just how bad they looked and that they were basically walking skeletons because they also wasn't receiving rations for food. So they were strictly living off of what they could find on the march. He did a great job at Gettysburg up to that point. The problem is he lost a limb at Gettysburg. He lost another limb but before he got here to Franklin. So by the time he gets here, he's not only an invalid, basically, strapped into a saddle, but he's also high on medicine, medications, laudanum, and other things. He's not capable of commanding an army, and yet here he is. He's not capable of making the decision that needed to be made. And unfortunately, it, it had dire consequences for his army. Mm. The, the man probably just wasn't in his right mind mm. at the particular time. If he was a, a, a complete man, I would thrash him. He's a West Pointer like the rest of my commanding officers, and they've got one way to fight a battle. He was great at a certain level, but I think at this time he was not in, in condition to be in command.
15th Arkansas. They were in the center of the line that uh, attacked the, uh, the breastworks over by the Carter House. And they're part of the ones that, that broke through the line and then got uh, engaged with the Updike Tigers. Uh, the, the Union troops all had Henry rifles and they pretty well got, got decimated. Company A, 125th Ohio. They had been the rear guard all the way up from the Duck River, and then when they got into um, uh, Franklin, the general wanted them out front as a picket, and they said no, or the uptake said no. He said they've been two days of rear guard, they're going to go back and make their coffee. And so when the breakthrough hit, they uh, kind of spontaneously counterattacked and sealed the breach. Because that the group they put out in front, the Rebs came up on them. Of course, they were overwhelmed, so they just started running back. And the Rebs, being veterans, knew if they stayed right behind them, the you know, Federals wouldn't open up on them. And that's what allowed them to break over near the Carter House. The, the line there, and then the 125th counterattack there. Oh. So they would assault, they would uh, charge up, they'd fall back, they try it again, try it again. Good earthworks dug in, and uh, I mean it was bad position, and just just it decimated us. I think another commander would have tried something else, maybe here, maybe somewhere else, and it's possible they could have succeeded, but then there's always Nashville. It's, time was not in their favor, unfortunately. Mm. Tennessee. He uh, pretty much decimated. There weren't a whole lot left to go to the Battle of Nashville two weeks later. So, mm. you know, it was rough here.
26th Tennessee. Almost everyone wounded or uh -huh. uh, killed. It was pretty much totally took them out. Both sides did stupid frontal attacks. <laughs> yeah, but this, the attacks themselves were stupid, but the men that made them, it took a lot of courage regardless of, of how stupid the attack was. And every now and then it did work. There was a battle at Missionary Ridge where they were attacking straight uphill and they carried the, the position. So. That's true. Before surgery was done, uh, like at the Carnton Plantation and uh, Carter House, as uh, field hospitals, and the wounded were brought there uh, by the thousands, <clears throat> both north and south. The uh, surgeons were non-combatants. Red flag symbolizes a field aid station that was set up like 50 yards behind a battle line. After the first aid was done at the aid station, they put them on a stretcher like a Halstead litter and take them back to a field hospital, which was several miles behind the battle line, and that's signified by a yellow flag with a green H. <clears throat> that's where they did the amputations and bullet extractions. It was uh, a pretty bad defeat for, for the Confederacy. Didn't end the war, but, but certainly the army that emerged from Franklin was in such bad shape uh, that it, it was not a, a real uh, viable force afterwards. You lost many brave men on these very grounds. Let's do their honor proper, gentlemen. Let's do our duty. Thank you for being here. May God bless all of us.